How would you feel about doing a counter photo? You and the princess. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the times Netflix's semi-historical royal drama stayed loyal to the truth, and when they indulged in creative license. I can start a new range. Say no to me. If you're not caught up, here's your spoiler warning. Number 10, Diana's Fashion Game, Right. Among other qualities, Diana's status as a style icon remains unforgettable. The Crown recreates some of her most recognizable looks, from the famed blue one-piece to the chic ensemble she wore that terrible night. The costume team sourced swimsuits from a brand believed to be a favorite of Diana's. Seriously, how long are we gonna have the pleasure of your company? Is the attention starting to freak out the boys? I like your uh, swimming costume, by the way. Who's a designer of that? I didn't know you were so interested in fashion, Nick. Dedicated royal enthusiasts may recall that iconic photo of Diana seated in contemplation on the yacht's diving board. The last season of Netflix's The Crown recreates iconic images of Diana, including this moment of the princess in a turquoise swimsuit, sitting on the edge of a diving board on Fayed's yacht in Italy. Actress Elizabeth Debicki shared that this was her favorite look, saying, quote, recreating that moment felt very sacred and important, and it was very important we got it right. Costume designer Amy Roberts also noted how Diana's distinct fashion taste made it easy for the costume team to create and visualize outfits that suited her style. Have you managed to enjoy yourself? No. <laughs> so much. We've all been sport rotten and you're wonderful hosts. Number 9. Muhammad Al-Fayed was denied British citizenship. Right. In episode two, palace staff raised concerns about Diana's blossoming relationship with Dodi Fayed. But also a fear that his father might use the association with the Princess of Wales as leverage and leave the authorities in an uncomfortable position. Their greatest worry being that it would be harder to deny British citizenship to his father, Mohammed Al-Fayed, if he were in any way tied to the royal family. The Fayed family is seen as good enough for the former wife of the next king and the mother of the king after that, then... How can the government reasonably deny him the British citizenship he is so actively seeking? It's true that Al-Fayed tried to get British citizenship at least twice and was turned down both times. Some sources say no clear reason for the refusal was offered. Some suggest he was also denied British passports after failing to meet the government's good character criteria. His situation was likely exacerbated by allegations of paying politicians covertly to raise business-related queries in Parliament. His feud with businessman Roland Walter Tiny Roland over the Harrods acquisition may have worked against him, too. Tiny Roland demanded an inquiry, which found Muhammad al-Fayed had exaggerated his wealth and background. Successive governments refused him British citizenship. Number 8. Diana discusses her future role with Prime Minister Tony Blair, right and wrong. In the first episode, Diana and Prince William visit the Blair family at Chequers. Later, the Prime Minister updates the Queen on Diana's interest in continuing her public service role. She feels strongly that she still has a lot to offer the country as a public servant and a lot of energy. Although a meeting occurred, it likely didn't lead to the PM formally proposing work for Diana. Sure, they had a chat, but job discussions weren't necessarily in the mix. She wanted to know if I, that is the government, could find a, a way to harness her gifts on a more formal basis, and that uh, any official role I, we, might offer her would be enormously uh, appreciated. In his memoir, the ex-Prime Minister spills on a, quote, frosty exchange over Diana's partner Dodi Fayed, who left him feeling inexplicably uneasy. Still, Blair remembered the sorrow he experienced after the princess's passing, and how he coined the term people's princess. At that moment, it seemed like the ideal way to encapsulate Diana's profound impact on the world. Diana was a wonderful, warm and compassionate person who people throughout the world loved. Our thoughts and prayers are with her family, particularly her two sons. Number 7. Prince William Disappears. Wrong. If you've ever glimpsed the royal family on TV or maybe even in person, you know they're always under watchful eyes. So the notion of someone slipping out of a royal residence unnoticed seems highly unlikely. So Prince William is not in this room. No one can find him. The pain felt by the young princes at their mother's passing must have been indescribable. Yet, as far as we know, Prince William never went AWOL. The real prince mentioned that the Scottish countryside provided solace during those, quote, dark days of grief, perhaps inspiring this storyline. Fourteen hours that poor boy was gone. He's never done anything like that before. 
And if he is behaving so out of character, perhaps Charles is right. Also, Prince Harry's memory of learning about his mom's passing differs from what the Crown depicts. He recounted his father, still grappling with the news himself, waking him with the devastating blow and offering little more comfort than a hand on his knee. And you write in the book that Pa didn't hug me. He wasn't great at showing emotions under normal circumstances, but his hand did fall once more on my knee and he said, it's going to be okay. Number six, how the summer of 1997 unfolded for Diana, right and wrong. In the first part of the final season, we delve into Diana's last summer, from her San Tropez getaway to her powerful call to outlaw landmines. While this season captures these significant moments, it omits several others. Also, her activism somewhat takes a back seat to her relationship with Dodie. If we could stick to the subject at hand, please. Are you in love, Diana? <laughs> please, can we stick to the subject of landmines? We're not answering personal questions. The media's obsession with the princess is widely documented, with some speculating she played a part in stoking the flames. Hello, boys. Enjoying your holiday? Yes, we're having a lovely time, apart from one little thing, you lot. Come on, don't be like that. Love us, really. Seriously, how long are we going to have the pleasure of your company? In one scene, Diana confronts a pack of photographers, pleading with them to leave and hinting at a big surprise in return. The series implies it was a strategic move to overshadow Camilla's big birthday bash. Did you choose it deliberately? Deliberately, huh? Well, you must be aware that today's Mrs. Parker Bowles' birthday and a big party is being thrown for her this evening by the Prince of Wales. You know, I'm having trouble hearing you. However, it appears Diana was gearing up to announce that she'd contemplated moving abroad, although she'd later deny it. Number five, the Queen didn't warm up to Camilla right away, right? Also in the first episode, we see Prince Charles throw Camilla a 50th birthday party, a move widely seen as his attempt to shape public perception of her. It would be transformative for Camilla. She will never be fully embraced by the public until she has your approval. But how can I possibly give my approval when I don't approve? In the episode, his aunt Princess Margaret attends the soiree while his parents are notably absent, though reports suggest neither royal sister attended. The vibe suggests the Queen isn't exactly Team Camilla at this point, and history seems to back that up. Rumor has it the Queen once dubbed her son's now wife, quote, that wicked woman, and said, quote, I want nothing to do with her. Or for Camilla to be considered wicked because she's not. No, just inappropriate. Really? Still? Surely not. Yes. Over time, the Queen softened up. In fact, during her Diamond Jubilee celebrations, she announced that when then Prince Charles ascends the throne, she'd like Camilla to step into the role of Queen Consort. Until now, mindful of the sensitivities around Camilla's role in the breakdown of Charles's first marriage, it had been intended that she would become Princess Consort. Number four, Dodie Fayette's fiance stayed on a nearby yacht in Saint Tropez, right? At the close of season five, Dodie proposes to his girlfriend, model Kelly Fisher. Then, in season six, he jets off, leaving her behind when his dad summons him to join the family and Diana in Saint Tropez. Fisher eventually joins too, but believe it or not, Dodie really did keep her out of sight on a separate yacht. Why are we going there? To the big boat? Mr. Dodie said to take you to the small boat. Supposedly, neither woman was aware she was entangled in a love triangle until the paparazzi spilled the beans. Unsurprisingly, this spelled the end for Dodie and Fisher's engagement. It's also true that she sued for breach of contract. A Californian model by the name of Kelly Fisher, whose lawyer is now suing Mr. Fayed for breach of contract. However, the Crown omits the part where Fisher reportedly offered to meet Diana and spill the tea on her new beau. Take it from me, it's pretty upsetting knowing the man you love might have feelings for someone else. Well, I never realized you could sue someone for falling out of love with you. That, that's new. After the tragedy, Fisher understandably dropped any legal action. Number three, the intention of that father and son's photo shoot in Balmoral, wrong. In the second episode, we see Muhammad Al-Fayed plot to tip off photographers over the whereabouts of his son and the princess, leading to that famous intimate photo. <laughs> But was he really behind it? The evidence is elusive. Someone seemingly gave photographer Mario Brena a heads up on their location, but who that might have been remains an enigma. In response to the controversial picture, the episode shows Charles agreeing to a photo shoot with his sons to portray himself as the responsible parent compared to their wild mother. Principal, a tabloid princess as opposed to a 
a broadsheet print. Now, how would you feel about doing a counter photo? The shots are pretty spot on, but they weren't staged vengefully. It's believed they agreed to the private photo shoot in return for privacy for the rest of their vacation. Thank you. <laughs> Smashing, thank you. And if you could look to me, please. That's the shot. Number two, the royal response to Diana's death, right and wrong. When Diana died, the queen faced criticism for her initial silence. It is not easy to express a sense of loss since the initial shock is often succeeded by a mixture of other feelings. But let's think about it. Her grandsons had just experienced an unimaginable loss, and the entire family was likely in shock, needing time to grieve privately. Yet the British public interpreted their silence as a lack of caring. There's a growing anti-royal mood, says the Independent, while the Express asks the Queen to show us you care. Speak to us I rest my case. Sarah which reflects the public's growing frustration at the silence from the horror. The Crown imagines what might have happened behind closed doors during this tumultuous time, echoing the public backlash. It suggests that Charles fought with his parents to take an RAF plane to bring Diana home and give her a public funeral. But apparently, in reality, it was reportedly the Queen who instigated both. His team have made a request to have an aeroplane of the Queen's flight made available. What for? to bring the princess back from Paris in accordance with arrangements set up under Operation Overstudy. Publicly, she delivered a heartfelt eulogy for Diana and broke protocol at the funeral by bowing when the coffin passed by. May those who died rest in peace, and may we, each and every one of us, thank God for someone who made many, many people happy. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Prince Charles traveled alone to Paris after the accident to bring Diana home. Wrong. He joined Diana's sisters, Lady Sarah McCockadale and Lady Jane Fellows. Thank you for how you were in the hospital. So raw, broken. The time Diana was pronounced, right. It was at approximately 4 a.m., as can be seen on the clock behind the surgeon in this scene. Muhammad Al-Fayed asked to go to the accident site. Probably wrong. Even if he had wanted to, it seems highly unlikely it would have been possible. Diana's driver had been drinking before the accident. Right. An investigation revealed that he had surpassed the legal allowance of alcohol before getting behind the wheel. Dodie and Diana went to see a psychic together. Right. Supposedly, Dodie was intrigued by Diana's on-call psychic. They helicoptered over so he could get his own reading. She flew 160 miles in the Harrods helicopter to visit a psychic in Derbyshire. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dodie proposed on the night of the accident. Wrong. In the third episode, just before their fatal accident, Dodie gets down on one knee, but Diana stops him before he can finish popping the question. I have a question I want to ask you, to which I hope you will indeed tell me yes. No, 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 no. According to Paul Burrell, formerly butler to the late princess, she once quipped, quote, I want another marriage like I want a bad rash. While there's no solid evidence of any engagement, it's possible that Dodie had wedding bells in mind. A 2007 investigation revealed he bought a ring with Di Moi Oui engraved, and CCTV captured him ring shopping in Paris. Whether Diana saw the ring or if he intended to propose is uncertain. Muhammad Al-Fayed insisted they were betrothed or intended to be, but the truth of what transpired in their Ritz Paris suite remains unknown. You're really special. I hope you know that. Which moment or plot point were you most shocked to find out is true or vice versa? Let us know in the comments. You finally succeeded in turning me and this house upside down. That was never my intention. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. 
and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.